Hi everyone, today we are going to look at AWS Bath Application Firewall or Bath. But before we go into the content though, let's talk about what Bath is. First, we have to mention that AWS Web is part of AWS's offering called Edge Services that includes CloudFront, the CDN, AWS Shield, that is DDoS Protection Service, Amazon Route 53, DNS Service. Now let's take a look a bit more at AWS WAF. AWS WAF is a web application firewall that allows you to monitor HTTP and HTTPS requests that are forwarded to CloudFront or to an application load balancer. It allows you basically to control access to your content and application. AWS Web Protection is tightly integrated with AWS services, so AWS customers can deploy AWS VAF easily with Amazon CloudFront, the Application Load Balancer, or API Gateway. But AWS VAF can be also used for the protection of applications that are outside of AWS. In such a case, content and application traffic has to be served through the Amazon CloudFront. With AWS VAP, you can configure conditions such as what IP addresses are allowed to make this request or what query strings parameters need to be passed for the request to be allowed. And then Load Balancer or CloudFront will either allow this content to be received or block it with permissions denied. So at its most basic level, VAF allows three different behaviors. First, allow all requests except the ones that you specify. Block all requests except the ones you specify or count the requests that match the properties that you specify. So the last one is for the cases when you are receiving a bunch of new requests for new application, for example, and you are not sure if you would like to block them or allow. And in order to understand and gain some visibility, you are enabling the count request feature. And later on, after analyzing your requests, you can decide what rules you would like to apply. In terms of uh, what it protects you against, there is a whole bunch of different things. AWS VAP can block malicious traffic such as SQL injections, cross-site scripting, remote file intrusion, DDoS attacks on layer 7, bad bots, and so on. Additionally, you have traffic filtering, so you can apply rate-based rules, IP and uh, geographical filtering, actions on HTTP and HTTPS traffic, and regular expressions. VAF also provides you with better visibility by monitoring. You can monitor your traffic with Amazon CloudWatch and take uh, appropriate actions. This is the architecture deployed on AWS at the moment. We have a static website hosted in S3 in AWS region. And in order to serve this site to the end user, we have Amazon CloudFront deployed in front of it at the edge location. If you'd like to learn how to deploy a static website under your domain by using CloudFront and S3, you can watch the video on our channel that explains step by step how to do it. We are happy with this deployment, but we decided that we want additional layer of protection and we will deploy AWS VAF. So let's go to the AWS console. Here I am in my AWS console. And we will jump directly to AWS Firewall Manager and start deploying our AWS VAP. Click Create Web ACL. Here, depending on what resource you'd like to protect, you need to decide CloudFront distribution or regional resources. In our case, we will deploy our VAP to CloudFront distribution. So we have to choose this option. And then it shows here that is global CloudFront, because CloudFront is a global service and we will be deploying our VAF to all edge locations globally. Now here we need to enter some name, so let's go for this one. And here we add the specific resource that we would like our VAF to be assigned to. We have only one CloudFront distribution, um, so it's easy. Go next. Now we can add some rules and we have two options. We can add manage rules or we can create our own rules. In general, most of the use cases are covered by managed rules and it's 
um, easier because you don't have to take care of them. They will be out automatically updated either by AWS or third party. But in case you have some specific use case and really need to create your own uh, specific rule set, then you can do so as well. Let's go and choose the manage rules because it's sufficient for our use case. And here you will have multiple options. So the first option is rules that are managed by AWS. And then here you have actually third party rules, mainly from different network security companies that created their own rule set. They are offering this on AWS and you will have to pay some additional fee uh, for that management. But as mentioned before, we are fans of AWS and we will go with AWS managed rules that provide comprehensive protection and it's more than enough for our use case. Um, so it's actually a bit new, so let's actually decide to go for the bot control as well. Um, and the core, core rule set. The core rule set contains rules that are generally applicable to web applications. And they are described in OWASP publications. So this is actually a rule set based on OWASP recommendation. Additionally, we go some bad inputs. Our application might be running on Linux operating system. And usually we have some SQL database behind. Uh, so we would like to protect it as well. Scroll down and add rules. Here we have a chance to review it one more time if uh, we are happy with the rules. And in case you are above the ACL rule capacity units, then uh, you might need to delete um, some of the rules because this is hard limit that you have to, um, to, to, to meet. You need to be below that limit. Um, and here you can define what will happen with the requests that don't match any rule. In our case, we would like to allow them because it will be eligible request. Here we can change the priorities. It doesn't matter really, uh, but um, we can move uh, the uh, core rule set um, higher. So it will be the first rule that will be evaluated. And here we have an option to decide if you would like to enable or disable sample request. So this sample request um, will show you a bit later. This allows you uh, to see requests that are going through the, the VAF and if they were blocked or allowed. So this is final review. All seems to be good. So create web ACL. It takes a bit longer today, but here you go, and it's success. You successfully created the web ACL. Let's go inside and actually check if all rules are applied, the priority, default web ACL action for the request that don't match any rules, and let's have a look on associated resources. Okay, so we have our CloudFront distribution here, and then let's check in our web browser if it's working. So here you go. Our static website is up and running and available. But how we will? Uh, how can we? But how can we verify that uh, the web is actually deployed and working? So what we can do, we can actually add some additional rules. Um, as mentioned before, you can either use managed rules or you can add your own rules. So I have some IP set defined before and um, I'm stupid enough that I will actually block my own IP address. So add this rule, save. So now we have this additional rule available here, kind of to block my own IP address. And then actually let's go back to the web browser and check what will happen if I would like to access this website and it's not working. So I'm not able to access this website um, because my IP address is blacklisted. So then let's go back and then remove this. So now delete. So let's go back once again and check how quickly the changes are propagated.
okay, so it's quite quickly. It took a few attempts, uh, but now we are able to access it again. So, but it's really in, in seconds. So the, the change when you apply new rules or remove rules are applied relatively quickly. Additional way, how to verify that your path is working properly and to generate some additional traffic, uh, you can use the third party tool. In our case, we will use um, buffer. So let's actually enter CloudFront uh, domain that we are using. Here you have multiple BAF providers. We don't have um, AWS BAF there, so we decided to go for other. Um, we will verify by adding HTML. I added this HTML before, so it should work. Okay, so there's some issues. So let's actually go back to rules. And I believe it will be because of this bot control rule set. So let's actually delete this as well and check it will be working now. Okay, so it's working. That was really because the bot rule on that we applied earlier. So now we will wait a few seconds for the evaluation to see the result, how well our AWS WAF is working. Well, and it's even better than I expected. So we have um, a rating, and the most important thing here is actually false positives. So there was no false positives, which means that all um, all requests um, that were sent, uh, um, eligible requests, were actually able to go through and to reach our um, website. And true positives that actually all requests, uh, malicious requests, were stopped. Here you can actually see also the attack types. So you can see what attack type it was. So we actually use ACL injection, cross-site scripting, common injection, SSI, a lot of different stuff. For example, file upload that actually might be um, bad for our static website hosted on AWS. So it actually uh, covers multiple use cases. And now let's go actually back to AWS console and go here to the overview. So in this dashboard, we should be able to see the request. And here you go. Here you can see that there is actually some number of requests generated. And here below in sample request, you are actually able to see requests that were allowed or blocked. So if you go, for example, here, you here you have blocked requests that were considered to be malicious. And here you can see the metric, so the rule set that was triggered, the IP address of, uh, of the request, the request itself, and then also the rule within the, that the rule set that was triggered and the result that it was blocked. So with this, you can quite easy verify that your path is working. Uh, you can review the request that, uh, that you are receiving and uh, based on that, you can adjust. So either you can um, update on the managed rule set or you can add some additional rule set. So what, what are the, the benefits of using AWS WAF. It's very easy to deploy. If you are already using services like Amazon CloudFront or Application Load Balancer, you can be up and running within a few minutes and there's no change required in your application or infrastructure. It's also very affordable because as for other AWS services, you pay only for what you use based on how many rules you deploy and how many web requests your web application receives. And it's managed service, especially if you use AWS with managed rule set, it's completely managed service for you. So there's no service, no software, and no worries about scaling. But in case you have some specific use case and you really need to um, create and write custom rules specific to use case, you can do so. So thank you very much for your time today. I hope this video was helpful and you enjoyed it. Wish you a, have a great day and see you soon. Bye.